Yoko Ono had been exploring her hybrid expression between music, poem, painting since the late 1950s. Here she's pictured with her then uh, husband, Toshi Chiyanagi. Um, so the concert series she co-organized with Lamont Young at her loft at Chamber Street in New York City in 60 inspired George Machunas to have a similar series at his AG gallery in Uptown and eventually developed it into Flux's inaugural concert tour in Europe in 62. Hence, Ono had a significant influence on the formation of Fluxus. As uh, one of the later members of Fluxus, Yoshiwada recalled, Machunas was a Japan Japanophile, a Japanophile uh, living like a Zen practitioner in a tatami mat room. Machunas' initial plan for Fluxus as a periodical developed around the late 1961 included a special Japanese issue which listed the names of calligrapher Shiryu Morita at the upper left corner, critics Kuniharu Akiyama and Toshiaki, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Yoshiaki Tono, it's actually on the second page, which is not on the screen, in addition to Ichiyanagi, Ono, and Ayo. These names seem to have been given to Machunas from Yoko Ono and Ichiyanagi, who returned to Japan in the late 1961. The prominence of Japanese artists in Fluxus would not have been possible without contributions of Ono Ichiyanagi and Namjoon Pike, who encouraged their peers in Tokyo to send their music scores and tapes to Machunas. Um, as we saw this picture already with Dr. Lee's presentation, uh, when Ichiyanagi held his concert at the Soget's Art Center in 1961, Mieko Shiomi performed as one of the members of group Ongaku, uh, which was founded at Tokyo National University of Fine Arts and Music in 58 by musicology students such as Shiomi and Takehisa Kosugi and group Ongaku experimented with musical improvisations using everyday objects such as a vacuum cleaner and uh, pot, pots and pans and uh, so on. Because of the affinity Chiyanagi found in their music, he asked them to perform his IBM happening and music, music concrete. Adapting the idea of inter Inter, inter, uh, indeterminate music from John Cage, Chiyanagi employed an arbitrary set of IBM computer punch cards as scores, and the performers were allowed to interpret these scores on their own. Instead of playing instruments, the players performed a wide range of unrelated actions derived from daily life, such as Chiyomi's blowing soap bubbles, and yes, now Tone, breaking a ceramic ball. These disparate actions derived far from classical music performance and approached the chaos of real life, anticipating flux concerts, which would unfold in Europe the following year. Uh, by the way, this was documented by Japanese um, Asahi News and uh, film footage is available and I wasn't aware of that until very recently. Uh, until it was shown at the Yasunao Tone retrospective at the artist space in New York recently. Not long after Ichiyanagi's concert, Ono held her concert upon her return to Japan in May 1962. Ono enlisted the help of avant-garde luminaries of Tokyo art scene, including the future members of Haile Center. Genpei Akasegawa and Jiro Takamatsu to perform her piece, some uh, pieces, some of which were premiered at her concert at the Carnegie Recital Hall in 1961. At the end of the last event, AOS to David Tudor, all the participants stood, uh, stood on the stage and watched members of the audience becoming audience themselves. 
along with John Cage's concert later that year. Ono's concert incited a happening craze in Japan. Uh, at the time, they were confusing events and happening in Japan. Encouraged by Nam Jun Paik, whom she, Shiomi met at the Sogetsu Art Center, Shiomi sent her endless box to Matunas as a visualization of diminuendo, musical term for gradually deducing the volume of a sound. Endless box consisted of 34 handmade paper boxes of different sizes, and that could be nested one inside the other, like a matryoshka doll. After receiving the first set of boxes, Matunas liked it so much that he asked for 20 more from Shiomi. The money he paid for them partly funded Shiomi's flight to New York. Shiomi also sent him uh, his, her early scores, such as this one, which she called action poems before learning about Fluxus. Likewise, Shiomi's friend Kubota also learned of Fluxus through Ono, Ichiyanagi and Pike around 63 and began corresponding with Matunas. Invitation to her first solo exhibition of her sculptures, First Love, Second Love, at Naika Gallery shows a possible influence from Yokono's concert invitation the year before. Uh, it has a faintly tight, typed instruction on the top of uh, Bellum. Uh, Kubota uh, piled up the room, uh, filled up the room with the paper waste, newspaper waste, which she called love letters, with hidden metal sculptures underneath. As her, her early experiment of an environmental installation. Disappointed at receiving no reviews, however, she realized that there was no chance for women artists to be recognized in Japan and decided to move to New York. Kubota's letter written to Machunas in early 64 expressed her sincere dilemma. In every day, I was very worried, uh, it's misspelled a little bit, which is better to be in Tokyo or to be in New York in order to live as an only artist. But now I made up my mind to go to New York. I like to touch, to see, feel something by touching a group of fluxes and leaving myself in New York. Although Kubota's letter does not mention what particular problems led to her decision, she explained late, retrospectively that uh, sorry, Japan was so conservative and there were only male artists and male-oriented society. Even Ono, who received frequent reviews in newspapers and magazines for her activities, activities during her two-year stay, decided to leave Japan in summer of 1964 because uh, she, what she was doing was not understood and disappeared into thin air, that's in her word, and she always felt as if she were talking to a wall. Before her de departure at Haneda Airport, which is um, included in this um, amazing documentary film, Aru Wakamono Tachi by Chiaki Nagano, um, she stated, I feel like going, going to a place where I can express myself more easily, where I can communicate better. So that's where before she left to New York. According to Ono, sorry, just messed up my notes. Um, According to Ono, critics continued a brother-in-law-like attitude toward anything she did and made an issue of her private life. Ono was deeply hurt and isolated herself from society, eventually attempting even a suicide after a nervous breakdown. While recovering from it, Ono prepared a, publish, 
prepared to publish a book of her recent events, um, works. In 63, after marrying American artist Tony Cox, who psychologically supported her at the hospital, Ono gave birth to her dear daughter, Kyoko. Grapefruit, a book of instruction, was filled with her wishes and hopes. Only avant-garde artists who frequented Nika Gallery understood her art and took part in her events. For example, the participants in her morning event held at Nika Gallery on his apartment and here at the Tama River in this film included Akasegawa, Kosugi, Tone, Shiomi, Kubota, and Pike. They purchased pieces of glasses associated with specific mornings of future by paying what, whatever they wished. While Ono stressed her interest in delaying culture by inserting a useless act, the average Japanese uh, barely felt a need to do so in the middle of the nation's rapid economic growth. Ten years absence made her feel like a foreigner even in her native country. Ono's sensitivity as the other in Japanese society was externalized in her cup piece presented in Kyoto and Tokyo in 64. The bold idea of having the audience come and cut a piece of her dress originally stemmed from the story of the hungry tigress of Jatak, Jakarta, a uh, myth of many lives of Buddha, as depicted in a renowned Tamamushi shrine in Horyuji Temple, like the Buddha throwing his body to feed the aged hungry tigress and her cubs. Ono was mostly concerned with the Buddhist ideas of self-devotion and selflessness by offering her dress to the audience. While um, this work has been evaluated for its feminist content, its link uh, to Buddhist thoughts and Gandhi's attitude of non-violence is equally important. After returning to New York, Ono presented, oh, sorry, copies uh, copies at Carnegie Recital Hall to the audience consisting of Fruk Spears and some public, but her message for peace embedded in a piece was not well communicated. It is well noting, uh, no, worth noting that Kubota Ono and Shiomi participated in shelter event by Haile Center, the collective which frequented Naika Gallery. Later in New York, Kubota introduced Haile Center's activities to Machunas and helped him publish the documentation of Haile Center's events as Fruxus edition. Uh, this was uh, um, film footage from um, Jonochi's a documentary of shelter event in which Ono and uh, also Kubota appeared as we discovered recently. And this is the uh, Haida Center events as published as Fruxus uh, paper. And this Haida Center's Frux uh, shelter plan was adapted and also re-performed as hotel event in New York in 1966. Although she was outside the, uh, the Japanese avant-garde, Saito was um, active in Sozo Biku Undo, creative art education movement abbreviated as SOBI, consisting mostly of public school teachers since 1953. She participated in SOBI's summer workshops and also at the meeting, uh, she once uh, she performed wearing handmade costumes. The report sent to Sobi by another uh, Fluxus member, Ayo, who had moved to New York, uh, I'm sorry, another member of Sobi, uh, Ayo, who had moved to the uh, United States in 58, were among um, inspirations for 
Saito's decision to go to New York in 63. Although SOBI was much a larger organization than Fluxus, he had much common in with uh, Matsuna's vision of Fluxus as a creative community and Saito's experience in it might have prepared her to join Fluxus. After returning to New York, from Europe, Matunas eagerly recruited Japanese artists to Fluxus and published their Fluxus objects and scores. Even before the uh, Shiomi arrived in New York, her event scores and address box were sold at the Fluxus shop. Hidden forces behind the production of Flux objects for Japanese female artists, Saito, who joined the group in early 64, Shiomi and Kubota, who arrived in July of the same year, participated in Flux Dinner Commune, which grew out of Machuna's utopian dream. They shared duties of shopping groceries and cooking um, dinners and producing fruits objects after dinner, though most of the duties eventually fell upon women and the organized dinner did not last long. Machunas even dreamt of building an artist commune in Japan where artists would grow their own food and in his own words, fruxing around public publishing all kinds of things, stranging idiots and lobbying the fat capitalists. Being the strong anti-capitalist, Machunas found a closer tie with Japanese, whom he regarded highly for holding non-capitalist values in his mind. Even after Machunas alienated himself by imposing certain rules of Fluxus members, and several principal members left Fluxus, uh, left for Europe, Saito and Kubota continued helping Machunas into the late 60s. Upon suggestion from Machunas, who was chess aficionado, Saito produced numerous chess sets that defy the usual rules and utilize five senses. Among them were grinder chess, which consists of variously shaped grinder tops, and sound chess for which players need to shake wooden cubes and decide role of each piece according to its sound, and spice chess, which need to be played by smelling the inside the container, each container. Although Saito did not know much about the chess at first, she played it with Machunas almost every night after dinner and lost the game. The reason why Saito kept these chess sets anonymous and gave them to Machunas was because she wanted to move on to creating her own work after meeting his demand. As a result, they were not attributed to Saito until 1990s. After Saito moved to Europe in 67, she developed performances with paper cubes. When she temporarily returned to New York in 73, she offered her kicking box billiard during the Flux Game Fest. While Saito's earlier event uh, called Mach Amusement was not, was canceled in 65, Xiaomi successfully presented her six uh, events during the perpetual Flux Fest at the Washington Square Gallery. Disappearing music for face, for example, uh, the viewers followed the Xiaomi's instruction to gradually shift their facial expression from smile to non-smile, comparing no smile as a pose in musical score. This piece was later turned into a slow motion film and a flip book by Machunas and Ono in their production of Flux films. Made without Xiaomi's input, however, it was made to focus only on the movement of Ono's mouse. Fluxus' transnationalist view of the world, where national boundaries are undermined by individual imagination and migrations, was best expressed in Xiaomi's spatial poem, a series of male art projects which utilized the postal system and the international Fluxus network. 
For each special poem event, Xiaomi sent an invitation to Fluxa's friend around the world, asking them to realize an event in his, her own interpretation, simultaneously at a specified time and return their reports. The first word event, for example, asked participants to write a word of their choice and leave it somewhere. Reports returned from 69 locations resulted in a world map with flags. Each flag contained a typed summary of a report. Over a decade, Xiaomi uh, collected reports of nine events from approximately 230 people in all, all over uh, 26 countries and self-published them as a book. Using airmail, Spatial poem transcended boundaries of not only nations, but also time and space. Especially after her return to Japan in 65 and having a family in Minoo, a suburb of Osaka in 70, this creative form of male art became a necessary means for Shiomi to enfold global activities with her local conditions. Machunas enthusiastically supported the project and worked closely with her through countless mails to translate several events into visually attractive and whimsical objects. Kubota, who stayed in New York and began living in Soho with Pike in 70, also continued to help Machunas whenever needed and was called a vice chairman of Fluxus. Her tangible co contribution to Fluxus, however, is scarce because she conceived only two Flux objects, which are napkins and pills, as you can see, and she did not pursue performance after vagina painting. On July 4th of 1965, exactly after a year, uh, after her move to the United States, Kubota presented this vagina painting during the perceptual perpetual flux fest. She attached a brush to her underpants dipped in uh, red paint and drew abstract forms on sheets of paper spread on the floor. Red markings inevitably reminded the viewer of the menstrual blood or childbirth. And there has been a debate as to whether she actually inserted a brush in her private part. This work had been evaluated as a feminist critique of male-centered action paintings represented by Jackson Pollock and Eve Klein. But her 2009 interview revealed that idea originally came from Pike. Since Pike also suggested sexually provo provocative actions to be performed by Charlotte Muan, Muaman and Alison Knowles, it is entirely possible. Pike had performed his interpretation of Lamont Young's Composition 60, number 10, in Bisbarden in 62, drawing a thick line with his head dipped in some ink. Since he must have been aware of avant-garde calligraphers in Japan, he might have asserted the East Asian artistic tradition against Western action painters. Even though the initial idea might have come from Pike, the fact Kubota uh, took up the challenge and prepared for it well in advance, uh, as you can see in this constancy from November 2000, uh, 1964, and then she carried it out in the public, should still be evaluated in her own light. About, about a decade later, uh, Kubota revived the word vagina in her witty assertive poem that went along with the, her one of the first video sculpture called a video poem. It was about a woman artist using video. After 1970, Kubota became mainly focused on video, even though her involvement with Fluxus continued until 1978, when Machunas passed away. The common period the four women artists shared in Fluxus was only about a year from 64, but they remained connected to Fluxus even after they pursued separate um, directions. Since Machunas death in 78, there was a hiatus in Fluxus, but many exhibitions around the world featured Fluxus since the 1990s 
and they provided opportunities for Fluxus artists to gather at various locations and perform together again. 1990, Venice Biennale provided a rare opportunity for women who used to be involved in Fluxus to reunite. Stimulated by these reunions, Xiaomi performed multimedia events, reinterpreting Fluxus, such as Fluxus Media Opera with the help of young musicians and artists in Japan. Likewise, 19, since 1990s, Saito has presented her own opera, wearing interactive dresses and engaged audiences. And also, Do It Yourself Fluxus Shop and You and Me, which um, partly derives from the idea of Fluxus Shop. Xiaomi and Saito have played significant roles in passing on the witty and playful spirit of Fluxus on to younger generations in both Japan and Europe. While Fluxus open-ended um, philosophy and practice have attracted like-minded artists of varied cultural backgrounds, it is remarkable that Fluxus embraced so many Japanese. These four women artists were pivotal to the founding and sustaining of the movement. Whereas Ono inspired the group's formation, Saito Kubota and Shiomi supported Machuna's production of Fruks editions. Uh, through frequent travels and correspondences, these artists forged the Fruks's nexus between United States and Japan and Europe, infusing Fruks's concepts and events with their new interests wherever they were based. I'm sorry for going over the time a little bit. Thank you for listening.